Hi everyone and welcome to Inside Dakar, day three of the Dakar Rally 2022 and on this show we do follow the team Audi Sport as they embark on their very first Dakar Rally. Now yesterday the car showed incredible pace, huge potential but unfortunately they did hit some bad luck out on stage uh, 1B and uh, the results were not as they wished. But today is a completely different story. The results today have been great. All three Audi RSQ e-trons within the top 10, which is fantastic. So I'm sure there are some very happy people down at the new Bivouac location. So let's just head out there straight away to Stefan Moser. Stefan, how are things like at the new Bivouac location? Hi Molly, welcome from Al Kazuma. We changed our bivouac today from Ail to Al Kazuma. It means 650 kilometers, and it looks like a beach holiday. A lot of water around us, but it's only rain from yesterday. So we have 10 centimeter deep water here in our bivouac, and we go back to the next place. As you could see, a lot of mud here around. Everything is wet, and the weather forecast for the next days is also very wet. We expect a lot of rain showers and uh, 14 degrees up to the 6th of January. And I'll be back in a moment with Carla Sainz. So back to you, Molly. Well, that's certainly not my kind of beach holiday. It does look very muddy. So I hope you have several pairs of good shoes with you, Stefan. So let's have a look at the route for day three. Day three is, of course, the second stage of the Dakar Rally 2022. And this is what it looks like. So the crews leave Hail, of course, and down to what was supposed to be a marathon stage, stage two and stage three. But because the Al Atawiya bivouac was unfortunately flooded, the finish of stage two is now the Al Kayasuma bivouac. And this is what the day looks like. Almost 800 kilometers total, 338 are super or special stage and 453 of those kilometers are liaison sections. So let's have a look back at the highlights from today. After yesterday's issues, day three has been much smoother for the Audi Sport team at the 2022 Dakar Rally. Due to bad weather conditions in the area, including flooding, the route today had to be altered. The finish was moved to the Al Kasuma bivouac and stages two and three are no longer combined to a marathon stage as initially planned. This means the cars will receive a regular service tonight from their crews in the bivouac. It was pretty cold in the Saudi desert also on Monday. The drivers reporting difficult conditions on the stage with wet and heavy sand. The all new Audi RSQ e-trons coped very well with the conditions. All three crews finished the stage within the top 10 despite their bad starting positions after yesterday's issues. Everything working fine and uh, no problems with the navigation, so happy to be here. The problem was that the, after a lot of cars, the sand was completely destroyed, you know, really soft, but really destroyed. So take a lot of power on the, but at the end, we manage the situation and we, 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 we try to, to, to keep the same spin since the beginning to the end. We had actually quite a lot of fun and uh, now we were P9 of the day. So for tomorrow, we have a good starting position back in the front group again. So. A good night's uh, recovery and then we push again tomorrow. So now a look at the results. Carla Sainz and Lucas Cruz set the third fastest time of the day behind Sebastian Loeb and overall leader Nasser Alatia. Stefan Peter Hansel and Eduard Boulanger finished the stage just one place behind their teammates in P4. Matthias Ekstrom and Emil Bergqvist were also in the top 10 of the stage in P9. Matthias Ekstrom and Emil Bergqvist are currently the best placed Audi in the overall standing, still suffering from the time lost on Sunday. A really encouraging day for the whole Audi sport team, of course. So let's head back out to Stefan Moser, who I believe is with a very happy Carla Sainz. Hi Molly, here I'm back with Carla Sainz with the best result ever for Audi so far in the Rally Dakar, third place today. We had a third, a fourth and a ninth place today. First of all, congrats Carlos, but I think it wasn't easy today. 
No, well, you know, much easier than yesterday, of course, but uh, at the end, you know, we start like car number 31 or something like that. So we need to overtake a few cars. Luckily, it was no dust because the rain, so we could um, pass uh, quite a few. I think 15 or something like that. So it was a, more or less a good day. Yeah, we have small small issue, but didn't cost so much or too much time and happy with the result. What about the scent when you follow all the other cars? It must be difficult. Yeah, but <clears throat> I think um, the, 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 today the ground was very damp, so it was for, for the rain. So I think it was not a big not a big issue today to, to follow. The problem was uh, due to that, the, the, the dunes and all the terrain was cutting off quite a lot uh, when you start so much behind. But in general, uh, we are pleased after what's happened yesterday. But we have to talk about yesterday. I know it was the worst day for you in the Dakar ever, yeah. what you have told us Absolutely, yesterday. Yeah. Uh, but could you explain what happened? Basically, it was... Um, you are not the only driver, I no, have to say. No, we, we, we spoke with many co-drivers and it was basically a mistake in the in the in the road book the way they describe the 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 note it was first of all it was off road and uh, we <clears throat> we should follow an average cap of 10 and and a small track to follow a small track off road is is, is not easy already but on, on top it was a, a hidden waypoint but on top the average cap is sometimes instead of going 10 uh, which it can go maybe 10 degrees left or right that is because average we were going 70 degrees outside following that uh, a small track so we we thought always this cannot be possible and come back and try again and come back so yeah it was very very tough uh, difficult to to swallow difficult to accept and uh, yeah for me this is becoming a little bit too much lottery sometimes and uh, i have done many dakars and uh, I, w i just uh, want to say after 14 years in the rally dakar yeah. it's the first time for you that you are lost in the desert huh? basically you are not lost but you 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 know the the, the way now they want to do the navigation uh, you know at the end navigation is is important and it has to be a, a factor in the, in the whole thing but you know, you cannot, um, it cannot be that um, the navigation is the, the biggest thing in the, in the, in the Dakar. That's my, my feeling. So, thank you for joining us, Carlos. We cross our fingers thank for you, you tomorrow you. and hope for another result in the top three. Good luck. Thank Back you. to you, Molly. Thank you, Carlos. <laughs> thank you very much, Stefan. And of course, Carlos, uh, I really, really feel the frustration from the 1B stage. but onwards and upwards and today has been absolutely fantastic so well done to Carlos and Luca for that incredible p3 on today's stage right if you're looking at some of these interviews that we are getting from Saudi Arabia and feeling curious about what the Audi camp looks like then you don't want to go anywhere because you're in for a very special treat and we are about to take you behind the scenes enjoy Everybody and welcome to the Dakar Rally Bivouac. Here we have our own village for about 3,000 people. This temporary village moves around for the next two weeks in various locations and inside it is everybody. The teams, the drivers, the mechanics engineers, as well as TV, media, the organizing body, all the officials, catering, medical and its own little, uh, its own little hospital as well if anything ever happens. Within this huge bivouac of all these people, Team Audi Sport has its own area and we have our own little bubble and bivouac. Follow me and let's have a look. Each car in our team has its own working area, which is a little bit like a moving pit garage. Here inside each tent, each car is set up and they work on the car in here in a nice environment, away from the wind and the sand. Once the car is ready, the car stays here overnight and the next morning the mechanics and engineers come in and they do the warm-up of the car before the car is due to go out for its start time from the bivouac. In total we have around eight trucks which carry all the spare parts and all the tools required to work on these cars at any moment during the Dakar. You can see behind me here 
a completely controlled row of spare parts, boxes, everything has barcodes, everything is labeled so that the mechanics can find everything they need to rebuild the car each night and work on the car and make sure it's in tip-top condition to go out the next morning. This is the working area. This is what we set up for all of the engineers and management team. This is basically the hub where every, all the analysis is done, where we have our meetings, where we have our briefings. And this is kind of like the moving offices or the moving uh, office trucks that you might see on a race, on a racetrack. This is what we have here, Dakar style. Everyone's got their place. We have portable power. We have a, a network for everybody to work off. We also have inside the truck here, a set area for other engineers, and we have a meeting room up here as well in the truck. So we're one of a very few lucky teams who have our own catering here within our own bivouac bubble. We have one extraordinary chef, another chef hand, and an assistant, uh, our, our cook, who cooks for our team actually has his own restaurant in Germany, so we are we're spoiled today. We have Kaiserschmarrn, lasagna, pasta, it's amazing. We have breakfast put out for us in the mornings. When we stay in the bivouac and we don't drive to the next bivouac, we have lunch made for us as well. And then every night in the bivouac we have dinner as well. So this is basically the hub of where everyone gets fed 24-7 for two weeks on the bivouac. And we have our tents on the side where we have time to sit down and have our food and have a little bit of a break in between all the work. We also have an absolutely amazing location. So here in Saudi Arabia, where the Dakar Rally travels through, we're in Hayil at the moment, and we get to work in some pretty amazing surroundings um, here with the mountains around us. But come back and see more tomorrow, and we'll show you a little bit more behind the scenes. That is a very impressive setup they have at the Bivouac location. So thank you so much for giving us that tour, Lisa. Now, we've been asking you all to get involved, to send us your questions, anything at all that you're wondering about Team Audi Sport and their participation in the Dakar Rally. And so we are going to head back out to Stefan and answer a few of those questions. Hi, Molly. I'm standing in front of Carlos Car, and beside me is Miguel. He's the car chief of Carlos Car, and uh, we are going to the questions you have sent from the uh, people on the internet. And the third question today was: To which extent do you revive the car to get rid of the sand? How do you clean it up? The first thing what you do when the car arrives is uh, first remove the cushions from the seat because they sweat a lot and are all wet. We remove the cushions try to dry it some with some paper then you remove the drinking bottles what the, what they drink and after that you blow the car first then you come with a vacuum cleaner you take the same the maximum send you what you can but together with the air gun to, to blow the car and the basic is is this basic is the inside of the car do you have children no because you know everything about cleaning everything around. Yes, I'm also <laughs> like a lady. <laughs> Thanks, Miguel. Exactly. I'd like to hand over your microphone to Julius Sebach, uh, the head of motorsport. So far, Julius, uh, we of course have t two more questions today. We always answer three questions. Uh, very easy. What is the fastest speed to travel the car? 170 kilometers per hour. It's easy because it's in the regulation. <laughs> True. <laughs> and the first question uh, I get today is, what is Audi Sport's target for the 2022 Dakar Rally, considering the debut of the Audi RS Q e-tron? Crossing the finish line. So we have to be realistic. It's our first Dakar. We, we had only 12 months for testing. Um, but today we saw a very good performance. We are very confident. Even it was P3, P4 and P9. So all in top 10 with a very strong performance of the team. Um, we still keep our target crossing the finish line at the first uh, Dakar. This is our target. From your mental side, are you still disappointed about that, what's happened yesterday? Because we lost three cars yesterday in top positions. Uh, but today we are coming strong back with three top 10 results. Are you happy about that? I mean, what we saw yesterday is that you can go circles in the desert with this concept without thinking about reach or anything. Uh, everything that happened yesterday 
was nothing where somebody of the team did a mistake or something. We, we did the best out of the roadbook issue, we did the best out of the crash, uh, what uh, Stefan had. So I'm very proud of everyone who is involved in this project. I'm proud of the performance we saw today. And I even when you take into account that Stefan got ready for the start today, was a big success, a big team effort, which everyone involved brought to this point so that we can, could do P3, P4 and P9 our second stage in the first Dakar. Yeah. And uh, my personal heroes are the mechanics of Stefan Peter Hansen because they built up the car completely and they worked up to the morning today and switched over to the next Bivax, the 650 kilometers hard job, but this is Dakar. So uh, it was an interesting day. We uh, hope that we will have another positive day tomorrow. So back to you, Molly. Thank you very much. Yeah, the Dakar rally is not only tough for the crews who are racing in the desert, it is hard work for the entire team. So thank you very much to Stefan, Julius and of course Miguel for answering all of your questions. Keep sending them in and we will answer some more tomorrow. Now, like in our previous shows, there's always something to learn about the Dakar rally. So we do have another video planned for you right now to have a look at how the stages and the routes of the rally actually work. Let's have a look at the different types of stages at the Dakar Rally. The special stage is like a time trial. The accumulated time set by the competitors during the special stages determine the overall rankings, while the previous day's stage results set the starting order for the next day. The liaison sections link the bivouacs to the start and the finish of each special stage. These sections do not count towards the competitive part of the rally. A marathon stage is run over two days, during which time no assistance vehicles or crew members are allowed to provide any help. Only competitors are allowed to help one another. The name already gives it away. Loop stages are daily routes that begin and end at the same bivouac location. Five loop stages are planned for the 2022 Dakar Rally. Each stage features checkpoints, which the competitors must pass and have a card stamped by a marshal. If they fail to do so, severe penalties are applied. The waypoints are geographical points that competitors are required to pass during each day's route. They are tracked and activated through relative proximity via GPS. Well, some more useful information there in today's wiki video. Now let's talk about tomorrow because tomorrow it is stage three of the Dakar rally, which was supposed to be part of a marathon stage together with stage two. But because of heavy rain and flooding of that overnight bivouac where the crews have to stay without any outside assistance, the two stages have now become two separate stages where they will have a service after each stage. So let's have a look at tomorrow's route stage three. So basically what happens here is that the crews have to go back to the start of the stage three from the Al Kasuma um, bivouac and then they make their way through the stage which is still 255 kilometers long, a slightly longer liaison section of 381 kilometers totaling the day to 636. So that was it for today. Hope you enjoyed the show. It has been an incredibly encouraging day for Team Audi Sport with all three Audi RSQ e-trons in the top 10. I, for one, can't wait to see what happens tomorrow. We'll be back then. See you then.